Fernando Alonso's career has been blighted by bad decisions, such as not joining Red Bull when he did have the chance. And it does make you wonder what could have happened if Fernando did join Red Bull. And we're going to do exactly that today. What if Fernando Alonso joined Red Bull at the start of 2009? To know what could have happened, find out in this video. Before we get into this what if scenario though, let me go through first what did happen. So Fernando Alonso at the end of 2007 left McLaren. After what was a volatile relationship for Fernando and he went back to Renault in 2008. But did have the chance in both 2008 and 2009 to join Red Bull. Instead though in 2008 and 2009 he drove for Renault and then signed for Ferrari for 2010. Where he and Ferrari failed to win a Drivers' or Constructors' Championship. Then Fernando went back to McLaren but the less said about that the better. But again what if Fernando Alonso joined Red Bull for the start of 2009? Well first let's start off in 2009 where I think his teammate at Red Bull would have been Mark Webber and not Sebastian Vettel. Because I don't think Alonso would have allowed Vettel into the team and Fernando and Mark were very good friends at the time. So I think it would have been Alonso and Webber at Red Bull not Alonso and Vettel. And in 2009 I think Fernando would have finished in second in the Drivers' Championship and Jensen Button would, like he did in our timeline, have won the 2009 title. I think though Fernando would have been slightly closer to winning the title but again Button would have just about won it. But then between 2010 and 2013 Alonso would, in my opinion, have won four straight Drivers' titles. Just like Sebastian Vettel did in our timeline. Reason being is because the Red Bull car was the best during this time and also Fernando I think is a better driver than Sebastian Vettel. So I think Fernando would have achieved exactly the same. Whether he would have been more dominant or not doesn't really matter because I think Fernando would have won all of those titles. But he would have been a lot better than Vettel was though in 2012 for sure. As I think 2012 was pretty much the peak of Fernando's career. But then 2014 and 2015 comes around where now Red Bull are struggling. All because the Renault power unit is so far off the pace and just has no real reliability. In this scenario Fernando gets very frustrated and leaves the team at the end of 2015. As he doesn't see how the team can win titles going forward. But where does Fernando Alonso go to for 2016? Well he wouldn't have gone to Mercedes because of 2007 which Mercedes have come out and said that's the reason they will never sign Fernando Alonso to their team. He wouldn't have gone to McLaren because the McLaren Honda partnership would still be a disaster. The only place I can see him going to is Ferrari. To replace Sebastian Vettel at that team and we'll get to Sebastian in a bit. But after signing for Ferrari he would win his first title with the Scuderia in 2017. As I don't think Fernando would have done what Vettel did in our timeline in 2017 at Baku and Singapore. And Alonso for me would have just about took the title. To become in this alternate timeline a 7 time Drivers World Champion. And it really would be up for debate as to whether Fernando Alonso is the greatest driver of all time. But in 2018 I don't think Alonso would have won the title because I think Lewis Hamilton was just too good. But it would have been a closer fight than it was in the final few races in our timeline. But this is what the all time drivers titles would look like if Fernando Alonso joined Red Bull and then went to Ferrari in this alternate timeline. Michael Schumacher and Fernando Alonso would be tied for first on seven drivers titles. With Fangio in third and Lewis Hamilton fourth but with only four titles. The world of F1 would have been a lot different if Fernando did join Red Bull. Especially again when it comes to the debate as to who the greatest driver of all time is. But what would have happened to Sebastian Vettel? Who of course in our timeline won his four drivers titles at Red Bull between 2010 and 2013. Well this is what I think would have happened. Because he wouldn't have gone to Red Bull in 2009 I think he would have stayed at Toro Rosso for another season. But would have signed for Ferrari in 2010. As Ferrari at this point would be looking for a replacement for Kimi Raikkonen and the new future superstar of the sport. 
But because the Ferrari car would just not be good enough, Sebastian would not win a title with the Scuderia. He would be able to develop the car well, but they wouldn't be able to have real success. And Vettel eventually would become frustrated and leave the team at the end of 2015, to be replaced again by Fernando Alonso. But in my opinion, Sebastian Vettel would not go to Red Bull, he would go to Mercedes. Because I think at this point the Silver Arrows would be keen to break up the Hamilton-Rosberg partnership. As it was very toxic, especially at the end of 2015. As Vettel would have replaced Rosberg. And I think Vettel would have won his first world title in 2016, just like Nico Rosberg did in our timeline. And to this day would be Lewis Hamilton's teammate at the Silver Arrows. Vettel's career would have been a lot different if Fernando went to Red Bull instead of Vettel getting into that team. Their respective legacies would have been massively different. But what would have been the butterfly effect down the grid between 2009 and 2018? Let's look at it right now. First off at Toro Rosso for 2009 with Sebastian Vettel staying at the team it would be Vettel and Bowemi not Bowemi and Bourdais. And Jaime Alguasuari would join in 2010 for Toro Rosso, not midway through 2009. Because Alonso would leave Renault for 2009, Renault would have Nelson Piquet Jr. and Romain Grosjean as their driver lineup, but would replace both drivers for 2010 with Robert Kubica and Vitaly Petrov. Because Fernando Alonso would be occupying a seat and Daniel Ricciardo as well at Red Bull in 2014 and 15, Danny Kvyat would never make the Red Bull team and would either be stuck at Toro Rosso or leave F1 altogether. Fernando Alonso's replacement at Red Bull for 2016 would have been Max Verstappen, but it would have been from the first race in 2016, not five races in, just like in our timeline. Because Fernando would never join McLaren again, Kevin Magnussen would stay at McLaren for 2015, but would leave for Renault in 2016 and have the career he has had. When Vettel replaces Rosberg at Mercedes for 2016, Rosberg goes to McLaren, as pretty much there's nowhere else for him to go. And in this alternate timeline, to this day, he would still be racing in F1, still as a McLaren driver. Because Hamilton and Vettel would be at Mercedes, Valtteri Bottas would still be at Williams, but looking to leave the team for 2019, as the Williams car by 2018 now becomes very uncompetitive. And Felipe Massa would retire in 2016, not 2017, because Williams would have Bottas and Stroll for 2017 at the team. So Massa would retire when he was supposed to. And of course, Sergei Sorokin would have never made it to F1. And at Ferrari for 2019, in this alternate timeline, it would be Fernando Alonso and Kimi Raikkonen at the team. As because there has been success with this driver lineup in this alternate timeline in 2017, there would be no reason to kick Kimi Raikkonen out. So Charles Leclerc would remain at Salva for 2019, with the Iceman still at Ferrari. But that is it for this very interesting what if scenario. One that a couple of you suggested in the comments, so thank you for doing that. And again, if you want to suggest one, make sure to comment down below your what if scenario. And there's a good chance I may do it in a video in the future. And comment down below also what do you think would have happened if Fernando joined Red Bull in 2009? And also what would have happened to Sebastian Vettel? But without a doubt if Fernando Alonso joined Red Bull in 2009 these two drivers careers would be massively different. And they would also be remembered differently. As Fernando could have been considered one of the greatest if not the greatest driver of all time. But it does highlight one thing. If Fernando Alonso had made the right choices at the right times, the history of this sport from 2009 on would never be the same. But anyway guys, that has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget guys, tomorrow is another episode of the podcast. As well, don't forget to join the Discord server link below in the description. Also with my Twitter and my website. Comment down below what you thought of this video and comment down below what did you think of this what if scenario and if you do have a what if scenario suggest it in the comments. Please comment down below what you think about those topics and until next time it's been me Chazzer HD, goodbye.